Hi YouTubers, it's Mark from Hoverdog. Welcome to a V-Blog. Right, this is a view you get on a lot of my videos. You are sat on my beer fridge stroke hop freezer. It's a fridge freezer combined. Freezer at the top, fridge at the bottom. Little freezer, big fridge. And it's worked well for many, many years. I came in the brew shed last week, opened the fridge door. I thought it's a bit warm in there. It was two degrees in the shed. And all my hops were uh, no longer frozen. Hmm, what's wrong with it? Well, I spent two hours looking for the fault and Googling and messing about. If you're a follower of BigClive.com on YouTube, follow him, he's great. He did a video and I wish I'd watched that video because he posted it a couple of hours before I came to the shed and I wish I'd followed it or watched it I could have saved myself a ton of time. What is the thermostat? It's it's cheap, but it's simple and it works. So the fridge freezers, most of them, have a capillary tube. A capillary is just it's it's just a very long thin tube. And in that is a fluid or a gas. And when that gets cold, it contracts. Right? Gets smaller. At the end is like a little bellow system, it's metal. And when this fluid or gas contracts, it gets smaller. So your bellows are connected to a contactor. So when the bellows move, it breaks the contact and your compressor goes off on your fridge, stroke freezer, whatever device it is. Then when your fridge freezer warms up, that fluid or gas expands, the bellows expand and the contacts go together and kick in the compressor and it cycles around again 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 so I came to the shed it was defrosting it was like or oh, defrosted all my hops I'm going oh crap what's wrong with this right it's not the aberrant temperature because my button was pressed on the on here so what is it and anyway, two hours later I, I worked out what he was I couldn't fix it and then it was late so I just forced it on all the time so my fridge freezer was running 24-7 I put my thermostat, sorry, my thermometer, this thing, it was minus 38 degrees centigrade. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The fridge was minus four, so that would be freezing my beer, potentially. I've not checked. Seems all right. Um, so what we've done now is, you, I've been online, and you can buy replacement ones for eight pounds, starting at eight, for generic one, going up to 70 something pounds, from an official Bosch one. Crack, it's like I mean, ink for inkjet printer this, you know. Oh, let's try and rip my uh, customers off. So, how do we fix this without spending eight to 70 quid? The answer is one of these. You could use a H, uh, which is STC 1000, that's got heated and cooling, but for two pound less you can get one of these. Uh, so this is an, an Ellie Tech. Um, it says only touch no menu. It's got buttons up and down, uh, and it's a EK thirty ten. So I've just wired it up. So that's what it looks like. I'll power it up and I'll show you what I'm doing, and then I won't be fitting it today because I've got a sort of drill holes in the freezer. But this is the first of two videos. It'll work out for one. Right, let me power it up and show you. This is the rear of the uh, little meter. So we've got our load. It says it's 10 amps. Mm, really? You've got your power coming in and then you've got your thermocouple. Okay? All very, you know, SDC 1000 uh, sort of, you know, same sort of thing, but you've only got one lot of cooling or heating it could be either okay dead simple so what we've done we've just got some electric in here 240 volts in for me and that's your thermocouple stroke probe okay right let's turn it around first thing it's white second i've lifted up the plastic and i've got some crap underneath it oh! right let's turn it on Interesting, on camera it's flickering like mad, but in real life you don't see it. 
Okay, so this is heating or cooling, right? So you've only got a few buttons to press. Over here, you've got your on temperature. Press it. It'll kick on at minus 17. Okay. You've got, or oh, you can press up, down, on the right hand side. Yeah. I'll just do it to the side without blocking the camera. <laughs> so you've got your up and down. No problem. You've then got your off temperature, which is I've set to minus 18.5 because your freezer should be about 18 or minus 18 centigrade. Don't know what this in Fahrenheit, you know. I live in a metric company. Company? Country. To change these, again, it's just up and down. And when you finish, you press the OK. Now, if you hold it down for a second, oh, you don't know. You leave it for 30 seconds, it'll lock itself, which I'm hoping it will. Um, this button over here is a forced defrost. If you hold that down a few seconds, it will actually put it into defrost mode, as in, it'll just ignore what you set it to. The temperature probe is one of these little black things, quite slim line. Uh, there is a menu in here in normal mode, which it is now. You hold the button down for five seconds. No on, right. So we've got nine, 10, 11, 12. We've got a lot of settings, right? That's why it bleeps a lot. It's very loud, isn't it? Uh, and then you can go into these options and you can, you can set them, right? Okay, whatever. And there's a nice little book that tells you all about what these are. I'm not going to go into the book. I'm, you know, I'm fine. So let's just go back to the, and go back to the menu. All right, we'll just leave it. Okay, whatever. I don't care. Right, so what we're we doing with this, eh? Why, why have I bought this? Because it was 13 quid. 13 quid, and that'll actually control the temperature. All we have to do is find a good place for this thermocouple. Or what it is. It could be PT1000. Is it PTC? Yeah, whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about. Right. Cut a hole out. Sort of messed it up a little bit, but I fixed it. They got it right in the end. Um, oh, a lot of room on the bench today. Um, right, so I should go in there. There he does. Right, we need some clips. Got me that way. Right, tubers, I've had a bit of a nightmare. Um I can't, there's an issue with the thermostat, right? Not the thermostat, the PTC, the thermocouple in other words, but didn't mind. So what I've managed to do, you saw me mount it, I realized I couldn't get to the screws, so I had to take it out. You can't get to the screws. In fact, that doesn't look very tight. Let's try and push that in one more. Nope, doesn't go. Right, okay, so what I've done, you can clearly see, I had a faulty switch on the main switch over here. It was arcing, long story short, Power comes across now, power loops into switch, out of switch, goes off somewhere in the freezer. The connectors were taken off this thermostat. Um, probe at that end, all wired up, I have not turned it on. Ignore that, that's a magnet. Now, I can't, I, I've got to get, I was going to put this back in here, right? Uh, back in that hole, it fits in that hole, but I can't really, because that's actually taking up some of the room. So look, this is what one of these is. Pull this, on, you can see, and I'm going, and that's it, that's the end. So, right, it's 1.6 meters long. That is no longer in use, yeah? Which now means I've got a problem with the sensor, so I'm just gonna hang it under the door, I think, for now. Um, so let's push this in. Uh, make sure all the connectors are on. They look good. And honestly, I have not turned this on yet. 
this is going to be the first time if there's a big bang you can laugh at me and I'll probably dump my pants. Right, I'm going to turn it on. Honestly, this is the first time. Ready? It's on. Holy shit, it's working. Right. I'm going to turn off the freezer, right? That's the freezer off, yeah? It was actually already turned on, I didn't realise. So I'm going to turn the freezer on now. So, I could have done this live all the time, okay? I could have made that even when the freezer was actually turned off, you'd still get a signal. I could still change that, it's only one wire. But I've left it as it is, right? Well, that, if I can get the thermostat inside the freezer, yeah, it'd be great, and that'll look really cool. So, I've had the probe inside the hole. Let me just lift this up again. It's actually a lot neater, so this hole goes in now. Of course, just behind this, it's just insulation. I've tried taking the top off, the, the metal top uh, of here. Uh, I'll, I'll try and put a picture in now. Uh, but basically, no, you can't do it because it's been um, put together and then squirty foamed. What I'm going to do is, this is the thermostat for here. This is technically controlling the on-off, technically. Right, so I put that in the hole, all right? It, uh, it's clearly not touching the cold bit inside because it. this should be rising down now to about minus 11. I'll just press the button. Minus 11, but it won't get to minus 11. Right, I'll just chop this video whilst I, I stop this falling off and come back. I'm back. It was all falling off. Yeah, what I'm saying is the on-off switch over here uh, is it's arcing quite a lot. So I've just put some uh, Maplin. It's switch cleaner. Well, electrical solvent cleaner, it's switch cleaner. It's like, I think it's uh, trichloroethylene, but whatever, trike. Um, yeah, screw it up the black crap that came out of that switch. So I think I fixed that. Uh, if it goes wrong, it'll just pop the fuse. This is now, I've shoved the thermostat in the hole and it's getting warmer, really? So uh, it is actually calling for the fridge to the freezer to come on and it just has the freezer has just kicked in um set point on this what is a set point i don't know i can't tell on is minus 17 and off is minus 18. okay and we're at 1.1 so um really it's not that warm if i set the thermostat in the fridge uh, in the freezer part you'll see so what we've got here is there's a the thermostat and that's pretty why it's just dropped out so it goes in that hole there it's a 10 mil hole you can't see because of the wire 10 mil hole goes in there and i've shoved it as far as i can in to uh i've made like a hole in the bottom i got some really thick electrical cable i think it's four mil or six mil and i sort of went down like that downwards and until, until I could hit plastic so so I'm hitting plastic that is not insulation I'm hitting which must be the inside plastic of the freezer so the idea is that that goes in that hole like that and by the way I have used a bit of a, a 3 8 pipe to push this all the way in it makes no difference so I think that's in how far is that in yeah that's good Right tubers, it's been on now for about five or six minutes. Um, this is my brewery thermometer that I use, which I always call as my standard. And of course, this is the one that's in the freezer I just fitted. You saw me putting the thermocouple in the hole. Um, so it touches a plastic, not in the freezer, but like on the outside of the freezer, on the inside of the insulation though. So that is always gonna lag. It might not even read the same as this one because this probe is actually in the freezer. But we didn't have a thermostat before. All we had was a controller from one to five, you know. So who knows, one might have been 15 degrees and five might have been 18, 19 or up to 36, or as you saw in the other video. So, well, on this video early on. 
Um, this is obviously zooming down because it's in the coldest part. Yeah, and I dropped it there. I've dropped it once already. And this is slowly, slowly, slowly making it way up there. So what I think I'll do is, um, this is just shoved in the hole. I might put a bit of silicon sealant around the edge. Just something to hold it in. Maybe not silicon. Maybe just some insulation of some kind. Even a bit of paper. Just something as a plug. So we bypassed the old cheap um, capillary one. And we've got a nice little digital one now. So YouTubers, vlog over. It's far longer than I wanted. I thought I'd do a quick video under eight minutes and you have no adverts. I don't know if you've been adverting or not, because I don't watch my own videos back and I don't really see adverts. Anyway, this has been far too long by half. I hope you have followed along. I like doing these engineer, engineering sort of technical challenge videos. Um, it's just something different than the same old brew day with the brew monk, isn't it? Or a pot or whatever else is knocking around that I want to use to brew. I'm watching the thermometer behind you, down to minus 13, so definitely get in there. Right, well, hope you enjoyed it. As I said, uh, I'll hopefully do a brew day coming soon, so I better end the video here. So this is Mark from Hoverdog Brewery signing off, and as always, stay thirsty. Oh my God, does this video never end, right? Okay, so what I've done to fettle it, that's a 17.2. It does. These virtually read the same a second ago, but what I've done is, if you hold down that button at the end, unlock it, hold it for one, two, three, ten seconds. And then go into F12, I think it is. Nope, 13. So this is the calibration difference. So it's been in overnight. So clearly the temperature sensor is caught up, but 17.1. Um, if I make that, it worked out about 0 0.9. It's 0.9 or 1 degree, minus 1. Leave it for 30 seconds. It will say, you can press the button, but that doesn't seem to work, or I've not pressed it long enough, but whatever. Um, this will now go back to reading the temperature inside the freezer from that little sensor at some point today. So 16.9, that's reading 17.1. That's pretty close. Percentage-wise, it's not a lot. So I've set the, um, I've set this now, so it'll come on at 16 and goes off at 18. So happy days. Uh, come on. So 16.8. So that's working fine now. That's reading near enough, you know, close enough for me. As I said earlier, this thing didn't have a temperature on. You just clicked it. Without having a thermometer inside the freezer, you'd never know what value that was right okay well that's it definitely over i'm not going to do any more bye bye